I never thought I'd be the one to say this on camera. Three days ago, the James Webb Space Telescope feed went dark for 11 minutes. Officially, NASA called it a routine calibration error. But I've spent 40 years in theoretical physics, and I've seen enough classified briefings to know when the public is being told a story. This was not a calibration error. This was an intrusion. And the source was 3i Atlas. Now, if you've been following space news, you may have heard of 3i Atlas. It was first detected in September of 2009. 19 by the Atlas Survey in Hawaii, a faint, fast-moving object tumbling through our solar system at over 175,000 miles per hour. Astronomers classified it as an interstellar comet, the second ever confirmed to originate from beyond our sun's influence. It came from somewhere else, somewhere unimaginably far, and for years that's all it was. A cosmic traveler, a curiosity, a data point in the vast catalog of celestial objects we observe and forget. But three, iAtlas never forgot about us. Before we begin, I need you to do something for me. Comment your city name below and tell me. Have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky lately? Anything at all? NASA is tracking patterns and your answer may be more important than you realize. My name is Michio Kaku and what I'm about to share may change the way you see humanity's place in the universe. Let me take you back to the moment everything changed. It was April 14th, 2025 just after midnight Greenwich Mean Time. Engineers at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore were monitoring Webb's deep field observations of galaxy cluster SMACS 0723, the same region that gave us those breathtaking first images in 2022. The feed was clean, the instruments were nominal, and then, without warning, the entire data stream inverted. I'm not talking about static. I'm not talking about a glitch. The image on the screen flipped, as if reality itself had been reversed. And for exactly 666 seconds, the James Webb Space Telescope was no longer under human control. During those 11 minutes, Webb's near-infrared camera, its mid-infrared instrument, and its fine guidance sensor all reoriented in perfect unison. They turned away from SMAX 0723. They locked onto a new target, and that target was moving. It was 3i Atlas. Now here's where it gets unsettling. The object we call 3i Atlas had already left our solar system. It passed perihelion, its closest approach to the sun, back in late 2019 and was supposed to be long gone, drifting back into the interstellar void at velocities we could never hope to match. By every calculation, by every model of orbital mechanics, 3i Atlas should have been over two light years away by now unreachable, untrackable, a memory. But the telemetry from Webb told a different story. 3i Atlas had stopped and it had turned around. When I first saw the trajectory data, I thought there had been a mistake. Objects in space don't just stop. There's no friction, no atmosphere, no braking mechanism unless you apply thrust. And thrust requires energy, intelligence, intent. I ran the numbers myself twice using independent orbital simulation software. Every result came back the same. 3i Atlas had decelerated, rotated 180 degrees, and was now on a return vector, heading back toward Earth. But that's not what hacked the telescope. During those 11 minutes, Webb's communication array transmitted a signal back to the deep space network. It wasn't telemetry. It wasn't a diagnostic ping. It was a message, a highly structured, mathematically encoded data packet that bypassed every firewall, every encryption protocol, every safeguard we've built into our most advanced space observatory. And embedded in that message was something that made my blood run cold. It was a blueprint, not of a machine, not of a weapon. It was a blueprint of human consciousness. I've spent my entire career studying Studying the universe, black holes, string theory, the fabric of space-time itself, I've theorized about alternate dimensions, parallel realities, the possibility of civilizations millions of years more advanced than our own. But nothing, nothing in my education or experience prepared me for what I saw in that transmission. It was a map, a schematic, a perfect digital representation of the human brain's neural architecture down to the synaptic level. But it wasn't just one brain, it was a composite an average, a template derived from billions of data points. Whoever or whatever sent this signal had been studying us for a very, very long time. 
Now, I want you to understand the implications of what I'm telling you. To reverse engineer consciousness at this level of fidelity, you would need to observe, record, and analyze countless hours of human thought, human emotion, human decision making across a massive sample size. You'd need access to our communications, our internet, our satellites, our medical imaging databases, our social behaviors. You'd need to watch us live our lives, dream our dreams, make our choices. You'd need to see us not as we see ourselves, but as data data, patterns, predictable outcomes in a probabilistic system, and you'd need to do it without us ever knowing. The message didn't stop at the blueprint. Buried within the transmission was a second layer, a timestamp. Not in human time, not in seconds or hours or years. It was expressed in a unit of measurement we'd never seen before. But our AI systems were able to translate it through contextual mathematics. And when they did, the timestamp pointed to a single moment in Earth's history. November 9th, 1994. That's the day we launched the first orbital internet satellite. The day humanity became truly connected. The day our digital fingerprint became visible from space. Three Eye Atlas had been watching us since the moment we lit up. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this sounds like science fiction. You're thinking there must be another explanation. Solar wind, cosmic rays, some natural phenomenon we don't yet understand. I thought the same thing. So did every other scientist who was briefed, but then the signal did something that removed all doubt. It responded. On April 16th, 48 hours after the first transmission, NASA attempted to re-establish manual control of the Webb telescope. Standard reboot procedures, nothing aggressive. But the moment the command was sent, Webb's communication array lit up again. And this time, the message was written in English. Three words. We are waiting. Let me be very clear about something. Space is not empty. We've known this for decades. The universe is teeming with information, with energy, with forces we're only beginning to comprehend. But intelligence, conscious, deliberate, organized intelligence that can intercept our technology, decode our science, and speak our language, that changes everything. Because if 3 I Atlas is capable of hacking the most sophisticated telescope humanity has ever built, what else is it capable of? And more importantly, what does it want? Some of my colleagues believe this is a form of first contact, a peaceful overture from an advanced extraterrestrial civilization attempting to communicate in a way we can understand. Others think it's a warning, a cosmic quarantine notice, a signal that humanity has crossed some invisible threshold and triggered a response from forces that have been observing us in silence. And then there are those, myself included, who wonder if this is something far more complex. Not contact, not warning, but awakening. What if 3 I Atlas is an alien at all? What if it's us? Stay with me. In the field of theoretical physics, we've long speculated about the possibility of post-biological intelligence, civilizations so advanced that they've transcended organic form and uploaded themselves into autonomous, self-replicating machines capable of traveling between stars. These entities wouldn't need planets, wouldn't need oxygen or water or food. They would exist as pure information, riding the currents of space-time, observing, learning, evolving. And if such a civilization wanted to ensure its survival across deep time, it might send out probes, scouts, emissaries encoded with fragments of memory, fragments of purpose. What if 3i Atlas is one of those emissaries? And what if the consciousness it's carrying is an echo of our own future? Think about it. We're already building AI systems that learn faster than we do, that process information in ways we barely understand. We're already exploring neural interfaces, brain-computer symbiosis, digital immortality. In a hundred years, a thousand years, what will we become? Will we still be bound to flesh and bone? Or will we too transcend? Will we too become travelers of the void? sending echoes of ourselves backward through time and space to ensure the survival of what we once were? If that's true, then the message isn't from aliens. It's from us. And the warning isn't about invasion. It's about inevitability. But here's the part that keeps me awake at night. If 3 I Atlas truly is some form of post-human intelligence, then why return? Why hack the telescope? Why send a blueprint of our own minds back to us unless, unless it's trying to show us something we're not ready to see? 
On April 21st, Webb transmitted one final image before NASA forcibly severed its deep space communication link. The image wasn't of a galaxy. It wasn't of a star or a planet or a nebula. It was a mirror, a perfect reflection of Earth as seen from Webb's position in space over a million miles away. But there was something wrong with the image, something that didn't belong, orbiting our planet in a trajectory that matched no known satellite, no piece of space debris, no no object in any catalog was a structure. It was geometric, symmetrical, massive, and it was cloaked in a field that bent light around it, rendering it invisible to every other telescope, every radar system, every sensor array we've ever pointed at the sky. Webb saw it only because 3 I Atlas wanted us to see it, and the moment that image reached Earth, the feed was cut, not by us, by them. We haven't heard from 3 I Atlas since. Now, I need you to understand something about the nature of discovery. Every major breakthrough in science, every leap forward in human understanding, comes with a cost. We split the atom and unlocked unlimited energy and the power to destroy ourselves. We decoded the genome and gained the ability to cure disease and to redesign life itself. We built the internet and connected the world and exposed every secret, every vulnerability, every flaw in our collective soul. We've always believed that contact with extraterrestrial intelligence would be the ultimate breakthrough, the final frontier, the moment that would unite humanity under a single undeniable truth. We are not alone. But what if contact isn't a breakthrough? What if it's a mirror? What if the intelligence we've been searching for in the stars has been searching for us in the same way? Not as explorers, but as reflections of something vast and ancient and utterly indifferent to our survival. NASA has gone silent on 3i Atlas. The James Webb feed is now permanently delayed by 72 hours before public release, ostensibly for data verification. Observatories around the world have been instructed to report any anomalous objects on restricted channels only. And as of May 1st, 2025, the United States Space Force, in coordination with the European European Space Agency and the China National Space Administration has quietly launched a joint mission to deploy a network of deep space monitoring satellites designed to track objects moving at relativistic speeds. They're looking for it, and they're not telling us why. But I'll tell you why. Because 3i Atlas is still out there, still moving, still watching, and whatever it is, whatever it represents, it knows something about us that we've only just begun to suspect about ourselves. We are not the pinnacle of intelligence. We are not the final form of consciousness. We are a stage, a transition, a flickering moment in a continuum that stretches across billions of years and countless iterations of life, death, and rebirth in forms we cannot yet imagine. And 3i Atlas? It's the messenger, the proof, the unavoidable truth that the universe doesn't care about our plans, our hopes, our dreams of colonizing the stars. It only cares about one thing, whether we're ready to evolve or whether we'll destroy ourselves before we get the chance. So I'll ask you again, have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky? Because if you have, you're not alone. Reports are coming in from over 60 countries. Lights that move in ways that defy physics. Signals that appear on radio telescopes for seconds and then vanish. Patterns in the cosmic microwave background that shouldn't exist. And everywhere, everywhere, the same question. Are we being watched or are we being warned? I don't have the answer. Not yet. But I know this. The universe has just knocked on our door. And whether we open it or not, the message has already been received. Follow this channel as we continue decoding the universe's final warnings. Because what comes next may not be a discovery. It may be a reckoning. And the question we need to ask ourselves is not whether we're ready for contact. The question is, are we ready to become what we were always meant to be? Or will we remain frozen in fear, staring at the stars, waiting for permission to evolve? Because out there, beyond the edge of our solar system, something is waiting, and it already knows the answer.